As someone who is keenly interested in what Uber is doing out in the world, I'm noticing this kind of tidal shift that's occurring. So back in 2016, when I started, it was Uber and Lyft. And it seemed like anything Uber did, Lyft could do a little better. And my gosh, have things changed, FFS. Now, uh, Uber has 74% uh, of the US rideshare market. Lyft and a few others have the remaining 26%. So that's that's pretty significant, but that's not where it stops. Uber has gotten into uh, more than a handful of other industries. And I'm gonna share with you all of, all of the things that they're getting into. So my question is, you know, is Uber's run here at world domination uh, good for the drivers? And I'm gonna tell you what I think about that and stick around because at the end of the video, I'm gonna share with you whether there's anything the drivers, you and me, brothers and sisters can do about Uber's run for world dominance, okay? Stick around for that and more. Hey everybody, it is Jay Crater with The Rideshare Guy. Mm. A little Nespresso in the morning, just to wake me up. So in our country, by way of background, um, in our country, we have laws against uh, monopolies. Monopolies are a company that is the only company that provides a product or service. We believe that the competition between two companies or three companies or four companies uh, is the way to go because that keeps everything equal and balanced and, and fair. We even have three laws in the United States, the Sherman Antitrust Act, the Clayton Act, and the Federal Trade Commission's Act designed to prevent monopolies from occurring. But what I'm noticing is that Uber is close to becoming a monopoly. 74% um, of the US rideshare market is Uber. Now, that's pretty close to 100%. What happens when Uber uh, takes over Lyft and Lyft isn't around anymore? Well, that's what we're gonna look at in this video. So number one, what is Uber's vision? Well, it's pretty big. Uh, you know, it used to be there was uh, Uber with a CEO named Travis Kalanick and they were competing with Lyft. Then he left under a shadow of controversy and in comes Dara Kay, the CEO now um, of Uber. And brilliant uh, businessman, entrepreneur, uh, CEO. And he has taken Uber into a lot of different directions. So I'm gonna show you, it's just how big Uber has gotten. Maybe you think they're just a rideshare company, but they are not. So first we see, Uber introduces a business travel option as it builds out enterprise offerings. So Uber is aggressively working to secure business travelers. Then we see Uber is going toe to toe with Instacart in a bet that delivering groceries can cut healthcare costs by billions. So they're working with healthcare providers to get good healthy food to patients. Great. Uh, then we see uh, cannabis delivery, right? Uber exec talks cannabis. When you open your Uber app, you can go get literally anything. So if you wanna get high, you can open the app and order your weed in Canada. Uh, next we see Uber will start showing video ads in its app this week. Uh, so this is one way to really move towards profitability and it's the same strategy that Facebook and uh, Google used. Um, next we see Uber wants to take Turo's whole thing. So this is car rental. So if you need to make some money on the weekend, rent out your car, right? You soon you'll be able to do that on the Uber app. Then we see Uber launches UK flight ticket bookings. So if you're in London and you wanna to fly to Paris, uh, open your Uber app and you can book it. Uh, of course, the Uber's in freight, right? Uh, Uber freights, Soder trying to balance automation and the human experience, a uh, natural extension of rideshare. Um, then we see Uber Eats. We're all familiar with Uber Eats, right? Thousands of delivery robots are being deployed for Uber Eats. Uh, next, we see rideshare breakdown. Uber leads Lyft on pricing and wait times. So this is part of the reason Uber has uh, over 70% of the market is because they're providing a superior product. How will David Risher, the CEO of Lyft, the new CEO, respond to that? And then, uh, then we see Uber reveals new airport and car sharing discounts for users that choose green. 
So Uber has announced three major green initiatives, and they're using this to generate a, a strong tailwind support for their corporate image. So as you can see, uh, Uber is really uh, crushing it uh, by expanding into other fields besides rideshare driving, uh, some of which are, are much more profitable. So number two, uh, a story and a metaphor. So a good friend of mine, he knows a guy who owns a bunch of pizza restaurants. And the owner of the pizza restaurant said to him, you know, if I can just make $50 a day, $50 a day. So all the money that comes in by people buying the pizza, I can pay all my people, I can pay for the building. If I can just clear $50 a day, and I've got my 50 restaurants, that's that's a half a million dollars a year that I can make profit. So it's not that you need to have uh, one, one ride share that's crushing it. it what Uber is doing is they're, they're, they're building up all of these different industries and they're just, all they have to do is make a little bit on each one and, and they're gonna move into profitability very quickly. So that's, that's the story. The metaphor is that of a razor blade. So a razor, which is the thing you hold on to, right? You can sell somebody that uh, for like $15, right? So that's one way to make money, sell a bunch of razors. But then you can sell people the razor blades at like $10 a month, and those need to be replaced, right? You never need to replace the razor. I've never, I've rarely replaced my razor, but I do have to order razor blades because they get dull. So there's two ways you can make money, selling the razor and also selling the razor blades. So what Uber has here is their app. And with their app, that's the razor, right? And then from that app, they have many different products and those are the razor blades. So, so that helps me to understand what exactly Uber is doing, which is completely different than what Lyft is doing. Number three, the impact of Dara Khosrow Shahi um, on Uber. Huge impact, huge impact. So as I said, it was, it was just Uber and Lyft, and, and then he came in and things just started to change. And I gotta say, if you're an Uber enthusiast, you gotta love this guy, Dara Kay. I mean, he's on TV, he's, puts, you know, he's, a, he's a good looking guy, he talks intelligently, and his mission is world domination, and he's achieving it. As I shared with you, like 10 different things that they're doing, and, and, and it's grown, they're, they're global, and this guy at the head of it has, has you know, he's an important, such an important part of it. And I just wanted to acknowledge that without him, I don't know that they'd be the company that they are, um, but they did get him, and uh, that's the direction they're going. So number four, most important for us, my brothers and sisters out there, uh, drivers, rideshare drivers, what does this mean for us? This means, no good. This is not good for us. So if, if, Uber, if Uber keeps growing their percentage of the market, they're already at 74%, to a point where it doesn't even make sense for Lyft to be in the, in the market anymore, or somebody like Uber wants to buy Lyft, suddenly we are in a monopoly situation. And what happens then? Well, the price for the passengers are gonna go up, right? Uh, certainly, and the the pay for the drivers is going to come down to like minimum wage levels uh, because the drivers, like me, I won't have any option to go, to go work for Lyft. It's only Uber. So what's gonna happen then is a lot of drivers are gonna quit and only those drivers who are the most desperate are going to drive, um, which doesn't matter to Uber as long as they have enough drivers to provide a superior service. Number five, can you trust Uber to treat the drivers well? Well, I've kind of already tipped my hand. I think absolutely not. Uh, what we've seen is Uber and Lyft look at us as a big expense and they've been systematically reducing that expense, finding clever ways to package it with this black box upfront pricing, making it look like it's all great for us. And, and what's happening is we're getting less and less a percentage of the fare that the passengers are paying. Can we trust Uber? No, you cannot trust Uber. Uh, so if you're if you're out there thinking, well, if it's just Uber, maybe they'll treat us really well. They won't. They're in business and they're going to get they're going to achieve profitability. And and the less they pay the drivers, 
the quicker they're gonna get profitable. Key takeaways, Uber's star is on the rise, okay? They're doing all the right things. They are darlings of, of Wall Street. Their stock is like worth a lot more than, than Lyft stock. Their stock is actually going up. So um, they're, doing, they're doing all the right things. So what can we do, right? What happens if it becomes no bueno? What happens if it becomes a monopoly? What happens if the rates come, come down? Well, you need to start thinking about that now and have your plan B. You need to have start working on something and that's one of the most beautiful parts about being a driver is that we're so flexible, we have time to develop other things. Um, whether you wanna start a business, whether you wanna be a consultant, whether you wanna offer some kind of service on Fiverr. Um, a lot of people became a mobile notary. <laughs> uh, that, that was a big topic about three or four years ago. So um, lives can change when you start becoming a driver because uh, you, talk, you talk to your passengers, you're just getting lots of ideas. And, and then you gotta take the action to go make it happen. And at the way things are going, um, this driving gig is just slowly, bit by bit, becoming less attractive, less lucrative. So uh, get to work, that's the bottom line. That's the key takeaway. Get to work on whatever else you want to be doing besides this, so when this does grind to a halt or grind to a point where it's not even close to being lucrative enough, um, you have something else to do. That's the key takeaway. I wanna thank you for watching the video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up so more people can see it. Um, this is Jay Creator with The Rideshare Guy saying thank you for watching. Uh, go out and tell somebody you love them. Go out and have a great day and be safe out there. I'll see you next time.